I see puppies. Oh, dear. Oh, hi. Hi, guys. All right, we're in trouble. Hi, do you like me? Do you like me? Hi. Today, we're at Lifeline Puppy Rescue. We're here to do complimentary exams on some puppies. This is Nominique. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. We're going to set up in here. Yeah. The fact that there's a need, we can help accommodate that need, you know, and we get to come hang out and play with a large volume of puppies. I mean, who's going to pass up that? No, your wife said, do not come home with three puppies, Ross. Are you sure? OK. Start bringing a line in. All righty. Oh. So we go to high kill shelters every week throughout the Rocky Mountain region, and we rescue puppies. Here, we'll just grab one each for now. Yeah, that'd be easier. I am not a vet. I don't have a vet on staff, but we do have a lot of puppies that always just need help. All right. So I have these little guys as seven-week-old pit bull mixes. Oh, my goodness. Give me this first one. My veterinary professors back in Scotland were really eager to try and get me to be a large animal vet. I'm a big guy, big long arms, and they were just shocked. They're like, you're going to Smalley's. What a waste of your big long arms. Let's get a weight on this little guy. He's like, I've never been on a scale before. <laughs> so Smalley's, yeah. is that a Scottish term again? Yep, small animal medicine. That's one of our bonds. We both got trained in the UK. Um, so we share that and we also share our love of a proper pint. Right. <laughs> or two. <laughs> it's okay. Heart sounds good. Puppies, uh, there's quite a few subtle things that are very important as regards their health. These look great, no dental issues. We check for hernias, umbilical, uh, inguinal hernias, things people wouldn't normally look for. It's all right, little guy. Tell me all about it. It's so good nature, it's amazing. So we're going to go ahead and get a visual update on our yellow-headed box turtles. They hatched over the weekend. We have five new hatchlings. They've had some time to absorb their yolk, and hopefully they're hungry. Today on the menu, we have these delicious, delicious little black worms. They're perfect for teeny turtles. They wiggle a lot. The best part about coming to work every day is coming in first thing in the morning and seeing a little baby staring back at you. So part of the daily process is just to make sure they're growing nicely, their shells look normal, and they're acting normal. There's one just hanging out in the water right there. Come here, little guy. I'm kind of just feeling around gently because they like to bury themselves in the moss. There is the last one. Covered in moss. Five total. Just a few days old. Now you can see that some of them have these blue dots on their scutes. So each part of the a turtle shell is composed of scutes, which are made up of keratin. Same thing that our fingernails composed of in our hair. Um, specifically with turtles, we can mark a skew on their shell. We use nail polish. He has a blue dot on his first marginal skew. So you start towards the front of the turtle and you can count along the sides here. And this is the first marginal skew. And that essentially identifies them. The blue dots kind of go down the shells, indicating their number along those marginal skews. So this guy is L1. All right, well, we can start weighing them before we put them back in. Eleven point two six. I take regular weights on these animals to ensure that they are eating and ensure that they are growing. Um, and a positive growth rate, of course, means a healthy, happy turtle. In a couple weeks, they'll go on exhibit. These turtles are ambassadors for their species. Just having them on exhibit will hopefully inspire people to value nature and these turtles in particular. You got to practice your climbing. You live in the trees. So you gotta make sure you can climb. This baby slender loris is two weeks old, just a little infant. And this is the cutest little primate little face in the world. And this poor guy, he was found out in the wild by himself. His mother fell from a tree and she didn't make it and there's no way 
A little primate, a little, a little loris under two weeks old is gonna survive on his own. All right, coolest 34th birthday ever. I'm getting to hang out with this slender loris. And this is the first time this little guy has been climbing. And he's doing so well. I know you had a rough go, dude, but you are just cute as the dickens, man. So I've gotten the special opportunity to get to work with him and spend some time with him and evaluate him, and I even get to feed him. How much does he need to eat total? Uh, well, we, we give him this. This is, this portion is enough for this small one. OK, it's just one okay. meal. Can you do? Yeah. OK, very carefully. Uh, so very slowly, you have to do. Yeah, mammals need their milk. And you're no exception, are you? Since he's not eating insects yet, the facility's created a milk that basically emulates the milk his mother would be feeding him. Did you get a yummy meal? <laughs> Was that a little nice milk meal? <laughs> is that enough for you? This little baby Loris is left all alone, had no source of food, no source of protection, and was vulnerable to any predator that can be in that area. And he was rescued. He was given a second chance. Well, that was a perfect little meal for the perfect little slender Loris, huh? <laughs> you cute, hungry little thing, you. And now that he's been rescued, he's being cared for. He's getting the environment, the safety, and the food and the care that he needs to one day grow to be a big, beautiful, slender Loris. And eventually helping with the breeding program or released back into the wild. I've got a four-year-old slender Loris on my left arm, a two-week-old in my right hand, and this is just an amazing birthday. And today was awesome. I came out here because I wanted to see these animals and potentially help them if they need it, but I'm also getting to be a part of the conservation. And I'm so happy to see that there's people here that really care about their native wildlife and really want to get them back into the wild and help with their population. And I could not wish for a better birthday. Uh, hey, baby. We might need your assistance. I was outside of the main warehouse getting ready to do walks, and two of our employees came up with seven puppies. Oh, yeah, these are that little babies still, too. Like five weeks old, yeah, six yeah, weeks old. Right, yes. A homeless guy with seven puppies and a mama dog had spotted two of our workers and flagged them down and asked if we could help out. I don't know where the heck we're going to put them at. It's one thing when we get like one stray dog in or, you know, a couple, two, three, but seven is quite a bit. They're max six weeks old and there's not much you can do aside from take those puppies because they're not going to fend for themselves in those situations. Let's bring this thing in and then we'll set the big crate up. And I got puppy pads and blankets already, so I would have done the same thing. It's very difficult to ensure that the puppies are going into good homes and good situations when you don't have the resources to go and check every single house out. That is probably like the hardest thing to have puppies on the road. It's hard. I had a few friends that traveled like that and it was like... It's hard enough in your own house. Usually what they do is they <laughs> stop whatever town they were in and they would wait, you know, two months. And then they'd get rid of the puppies and then they'd move, you know. That's what I think. Yeah, that's, it's, it's like impossible to move with puppies like that. Three boys? Three boys. We gotta start thinking of Nate. Four boys. That's the little blue-eyed one. Oh, you peed already. Nice. All right, let me see. Around this time of year, it's a lot to take on. Seven puppies, it's hard, and, and things are always hard around Christmas time and, and the holidays. So it definitely, it stretches us a little thin, but it, we gotta do it. It's our job. Um, I have a bowl with water somewhere. Now that we've got all the puppies in, we're gonna just get their paperwork done, give them baths, get them fed, and then let them relax for the night for them. All right, all right, puppies, chill out, chillax. Bye bye. Puppies in VRC are usually adopted out pretty quickly, so hopefully they'll make it into their forever homes before they have to spend too much time at the rescue. I mean, that's the thing that most people don't realize is, especially a lot of people that are traveling or homeless or whatever, even when their dogs do need medical attention, most of the time they take great care of their dogs. They just need a little bit of help. Resources? Yeah. Even if you have the resources that VRC has, puppies are still a handful to take care of. They cost a lot of money. Um, a lot of food. Hang on, we're almost done. Come here, little one. Eating my shoe. That's good. Wait, come back here. Hang on, don't be, just let it happen. Okay. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> so Lawrence was born at Taronga Western Plains Zoo out in Dubbo. He was actually abandoned by his mum at six days of age. So the keepers had to step in and hand rear him. They contacted us because we are a hands-on facility. That way we could continue his hand rearing and keep that human interaction going. <laughs> hey, that's what it is. Good boy. Males form little coalitions, so if you've got a group of males in a litter, they might stay together, hunt together, or a singular male might come across another male of similar age, they'll stay together and hunt together. There it is. The fact that Lawrence, he was a single cub and he's never been with litter mates, he doesn't really have that cheetah to cheetah contact. Lawrence has been on his own for over a year and a half now, and it'd be really nice for him to have a little friend. You hop off the line so I can move it? Lawrence is kind of like a teenage boy. He's a little bit too cool for school. He's growing up, feeling his hormones, acting out, doing all the normal things a male cheetah would do. No, don't be naughty. However, we have a plan. We're getting a new cheetah cub from South Africa, and they can be buddies, and then we'll see how it goes from there. You're being a bit lazy today. So it's been a nice long journey. We'll be releasing him into his new yard and just seeing how he um, likes the new area. Good man. Little man. Facing the wrong way. You ready? Good boy. OK. Where are you? Baby cheetahs are very vulnerable. You're right. And the cards are really stacked against them. It's pretty sweet, isn't it? They're not technically a big cat because they don't roar, they actually purr. And they are somewhat more affectionate than other big cats because they're not a flight or fight animal. It's a tiny cat in a huge yard, isn't it? Very unsure. It's just a different dynamic of cat, more petite, kind of sweet, noble, regal. He will have at least a week before we start to introduce him to Lawrence. They probably, first time when they see each other, are going to vocalise at each other. There may be a slight little bit of aggression, which is normal. It will be a slow process over multiple days of just letting them slowly get used to each other. 